Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stagey YouTube channel. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I'm obsessed with all things theatre. Today, I am very excited to be in London at the Her Majesty's Theatre to see Phantom of the Opera. This is my first time seeing the show in almost 10 years. It was obviously recently shut down for an extended period due to COVID-19. As well as that, they've made a lot of changes to the show. So I'm going to be letting you know what I think about the performances and the new cast today, but also letting you know how many changes have been made to the original production. We're going to go inside, we're going to have a look. Oh, oh my god, hey! Too far, too far, every single time. Oh my god, hey! I am back in my flat. I saw Phantom earlier today and now I am going to tell you all about it. There is so much to say in this video. There is so much to cover. I feel like I've been talking about the saga of Phantom's reopening and the changes to the show for a really long time. There have been so many YouTube videos where I've talked about this. We are finally here at the end of the road. No more speculation, no more rumors and gossip and possible chandeliers. I have seen the show. I'm going to tell you what the changes were. So some backstory. I bought a ticket to this as part of Today Tix's London Theatre Week sale because they were doing brilliant discounts. I actually got myself a seat in the front row of stalls. Subsequently forgot I'd bought front stalls until I got there and was like, oh, I appear to be in the front row. I had never seen Phantom from the front row before and it was a mind-blowing experience. I will say my eyes, my ears had a great time, my knees did not. If you are taller than me, I'm 5'11", do not buy front row seats at Her Majesty's Theatre. Even the second row of stalls was fine but front row, just the thing in front of you was very close. Now, I wasn't sure if the show was actually going to be going ahead because last night's performance, that is the Saturday night of the 2nd of October, had been cancelled halfway through the title song, halfway through the song The Phantom of the Opera. It has not yet officially been clarified what happened. There are rumours and dialogue swirling about a cast member being injured. I do not want to add to speculation or talk about someone's health or medical condition or anything like that. I asked the ushers today if they were able to give any clarification and understandably they weren't able to say anything, which I absolutely respect and understand. So I'm not going to throw rumors in on here. If anyone is currently uh, recovering, I wish them the very best. At the performance I saw, Killian was playing Phantom, Holly Ann Hull was playing Christine, and Reese was playing Raoul. So I was particularly excited um, to actually get to the show and find out the show was going ahead today. Something interesting happened in the second act. There was a show stop. Now this is quite rare in the West End. If you think about how many shows I see, I haven't seen a show stop, I think since American in Paris at the Dominion Theatre. Cast members and crew members will do a lot to prevent that happening. If a show has to actually stop and make an announcement, it means there is literally no other choice and it's quite a serious situation. It came in the second act, right after Raoul confronted Madame Giry after Masquerade and the manager's scene was about to come on to do um, the notes reprise and Twisted Every Way where they're trying to coerce Christine into doing the opera. But I don't understand what the issue was. So Monsieur Andre started running on, saw that the safety curtain was coming down, turned around, ran off, the conductor lost his mind and was like, oh gosh, everyone stop, 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 stop. And the audience was like, rrr, 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 rrr. so I'm trying to think what set piece were they struggling to bring in? Because usually that's the problem. When the show restarted, it's just a desk and a chair and some drapes, none of which was really essential to the scene. Like if a set piece can't come on that's not essential, normally they will continue without it. So I'm fascinated as to what happened there, unless it was like a costume change someone needed to make that wasn't working on time because everyone comes on in new costumes from the masquerade scene, or if someone was just momentarily taken unwell, or I, I really don't know. But it only lasted about five minutes and the show continued. Now let me talk about the changes. Gosh, there's so much to cover. So the first thing that you notice is the structure of the actual proscenium arch has been rebuilt slightly differently. It does not have the big angel thing at the top, the sculpture, the sort of plinth, I don't know what it is. Ordinarily, that will then double as a set piece that the Phantom will descend on to sing his evil reprise after All I Ask of You to end the first act. That does not happen in this production. Instead, the roof of the Paris Opera House set has been slightly reworked. I don't like it as much. It looks a little bit cheap at the back, if I'm being honest, but it does have this big 
horse winged statue thing that moves to the front and turns around and he's standing on the back of that. I didn't have a problem with it being that versus the angel. I know a lot of fans are very dedicated to the angel and were very sad to see it go. It didn't cause me an issue enjoying the show. In fact, as someone who was in the front row of the stalls, sight lines were probably better for me that he was on that statue and not above me descending on the angel. There are a few other changed set pieces. Uh, Christine's dressing room that she goes to after Think of Me is a slightly different set piece now. Uh, Phantom's Lair is a slightly different set only because uh, the candles and the candelabras I believe have been changed. But just to give you an overall gist of it, I have seen the London production before, back when it was the brilliant original, and I have seen the 25th anniversary tour, the one with the completely different set, the completely different costumes. This was not that. This was based on the more recent tour that was a replica of the London production with some slight changes, okay? They are very minimal changes. Costuming, I didn't notice any changes, but it's been long enough since I saw it and I hadn't seen it from great seats before, so I don't know that I would have noticed intricate details. I'm sure there are some slightly different elements. There's some other moments that I thought, is this a change or did I just never notice this before? Every time they had the boxes come on at the sides, I was like, did they always have boxes? I feel like I've just maybe watched the Royal Albert Hall version too much and I'm used to that set and obviously that was never the exact original Her Majesty's Theatre set. Also at the end when they are coming for him in the lair, did people normally descend down the cage bits? Because there were people on wires like climbing down to go and like, like a mob was coming down to go and get him. Also Meg crawling under the cage door. I don't remember that being how she gained access to his lair before. Enlighten me if you know, because I'm curious. The chandelier being different is a big one. So it is a slightly different chandelier to the original London chandelier. I liked this chandelier. I didn't have an issue with it. It did clever things. It had some of its own built-in lights. It explodes and sparks a little bit when he shoots it at the end of Act one and it then descended reasonably fast. I know everyone always says the chandelier is super slow and non-threatening in London, but being beneath it, I was very scared. They also changed some of the dialogue around that first scene because the chandelier doesn't look as broken as it was initially described to be, so that is all gone. In the music of the night, the design of the Christine doll is different. I couldn't see exactly what it looked like from where I was sitting because it was very much stage right and I was very much sat stage left. It is normally sort of a very close replica of her that's reasonably lifelike looking because it's played by a female ensemble member. Now in this production, Holly Ann Hull, who is a white actress, is an alternate for at least one performance a week for Lucy St. Louis, who is a black actress. So they're not going to have one universal replica looking Christine double. Oh, that's another thing. So the bridge that they descend down to Phantom's Lane on. I'm convinced that's a different bridge to how it looked before and from what I could tell they are no longer doubles using that bridge It is now the actual Phantom and Christine However, and this is controversial from where I was sitting and I could be wrong It appeared as though the entire title song the entirety of the Phantom of the Opera was lip-synced. This surprised me because I thought at least at some points they would go back to live vocals but I'm convinced that from where I could see them through the gauze on the bridge they didn't look like they were really singing live. And even then when they came out and he was saying, sing for me, it sounded like he was then delivering that live, but it didn't sound like her little vocalizations at the end were live at all. It didn't look as though they were. It sounded and looked like a pre-recorded vocal. If it was live, it was immaculate, but I have my suspicions that the entire thing may have been on track. Controversial if true, and we will probably never get confirmation of that because I'm sure it's a closely guarded secret. However, it super seemed that way. It just didn't look how it looked when she was singing in Think of Me. It just didn't match. Another thing that's different in music of the night, um, he doesn't pick her up and put her in the boat anymore. He super just leaves her on the floor after she faints and puts a cloak over her. I thought that was funny. Wasn't supposed to be. There's actually a lot of cute little comic asides and just details I had never noticed before. These may be new things that people have added and just sort of little character moments, especially in some of the busier scenes. In that first scene when they're rehearsing and the new managers are coming and there's so much going on, so many little comedy moments that I had never noticed before. And that could be that they're new. It could be that I've only ever sat in terrible seats. But that was really fun. That was a really nice touch. I love productions that do that and sort of pay attention to the small details and give everyone just some business to be working with. I like a visual feast as an audience member. My eyes get bored. I like to wander. There was also one Madame Giry section I thought had been transposed lower and it's when she has a go at Joseph Bouquet. Joseph Bouquet, hold your tongue. He will burn you with the heat of his eyes. 
that bit. It felt lower than usual, but it also felt like a bit where no one was really gonna complain about the key of that being changed. Also, the actress sang way higher stuff later, so I don't know why it would need to have been changed. And finally, I want to talk about the reduction of the orchestra or the band as we should really call it, because with that many strings it is not an orchestra. Now this is controversial, and I really don't even know where I fall on this. I think it's a terrible shame for the musicians who had been working on that show for decades and had a certain amount of job security, that they were basically forced out of a job so that Cameron McIntosh and Andrew Lloyd Webber could make a cheaper production, basically, a production that was going to be more profitable for them in the long run, and by profitable I mean they are spending less, they are making more. And I know it's their show, and I know they have the right to do whatever they want with it, but I do have a very hard time sympathising with millionaires and billionaires who would treat their staff that way during a pandemic. However, it's not an industry where anyone can expect job security for life, and equally, from where I was sitting, you couldn't notice the difference that much. That's not true. You could tell the difference, and bear in mind, I have a certain amount of insight when it comes to music, I've trained in music, I could hear the difference in timbre. You can tell that it's a lot less strings heavy and a lot less woodwind heavy, and it's just more synth than there previously was. However, it's quite good quality synth, so that the overall power of the sound, it's a little lacking from where it was, but it's, it's roughly quite similar. It's worth saying, again, I was front stalls, the pit was in front of me, so if anyone was gonna hear the strings, I was gonna hear the strings. It may be from further back you're getting more of the synth. I'd be interested to know what the mix sounds like in different parts of the theater. Also, I couldn't help but compare it to the Royal Albert Hall 25th anniversary version, which is always going to have been a much bigger, more lush sound. When I listened to the Phantom Cast recording, that's the one I listened to. So it was never going to be that. But at the big, powerful, iconic orchestral moments, I didn't have an issue with this band sound. And it's still a larger band than most shows in the West End have, I'll be honest. From looking into the pit, there were still many more people down there than you would see on most big West End musicals. I do think that, however, for the majority of people who are just there to enjoy the show, they won't have an issue with it. It's not going to impair really anyone's enjoyment of the show unless you're having sort of a moral objection to it, which I understand. Speaking of which, let me now tell you if I enjoyed the show. I really enjoyed the show! I have a lot of love for Phantom. It's one of those shows where it's going through and there's the big iconic numbers, but then they get to a little bit and I'm like, oh, I love this section as well. Like, I really enjoy notes. I love Masquerade. Just all of the little incidental moments. The entire final layer sequence. There's just so many parts of this score that I really enjoy in a very guilty pleasure way. It was an amazing experience seeing it from the front row as well. I feel like I grew up coming up to West End theatres as a teenager and I have sat in the back corner of every West End house because that's all I could afford and that's all I expected to ever be able to afford. I never thought of myself as anyone who was ever going to sit front row in a West End theatre so that was insane to me and just brought me so much joy. Just getting to see it all and drink it all in and see these details and the costumes and just the direction and it was really fantastic. It was the best I had ever seen Phantom as a production. A very well-rounded cast as well. I didn't think there were any weaknesses in the cast. I really enjoyed Holly Ann Hull as Christine. She was very Sierra Boggess-esque in her vowel shaping and also just in her placement and sort of depth in terms of her proportions of head and chest voice, like in Wishing You Were Somehow Here Again and the final layer. Very similar in the way that she sang that. They're both big fans of Order Your Fine Horses. Reese Whitfield might have been my favourite part about this show. He is brilliant as Ralph just so engaging. You know, he manages to coerce Christine in a way that still feels protective rather than domineering and condescending. Raoul can very easily go to that arrogant, obnoxious place, but I really liked his portrayal. He's a lot younger of a Raoul than some of the other ones I've seen as well, so no doubt that helped. I really enjoyed Killian as the Phantom. There were some great vocal moments. He sort of just delivered a great Phantom. I've seen some really iconic Phantom deliveries before, so he had a lot to live up to but he sold all the really big money notes that he needed to, he gave great drama in the final scene, I enjoyed him as the Phantom. Basically, after all of the concern that everyone has had about this show, I think it's in really 
tremendous shape. All of the set pieces, everything looked new and together, nothing looked to be falling apart, it just looked like, for all intents and purposes, a new shiny production that had recently seen a creative team. You know, sometimes for shows that have run a long time in the West End, it sort of starts to feel more like it's being put on for the tourists and maybe the whole cast aren't giving full energy all the time and maybe some bits are starting to, I don't know, the paint's starting to peel a little bit in more ways than one, but I didn't think that at all with this. I thought it was really tight, spot on, really enjoyed it, would recommend people who maybe hadn't thought about going to see Phantom before or weren't that interested, go and see this production of The Phantom of the Opera. And if you have seen it already, do feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments section down below. I know people have some very strong feelings about this, there are a lot of hardcore fans of Phantom of the Opera who have loved it for years and seen it hundreds of times who weren't all that pleased about the changes made to it. I hope I may have been able to reassure you a little. Everyone is entitled to their opinion about any and all of the things that I've said. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more content about all your favourite West End and touring shows coming very soon. If there's a specific show you would like for me to talk about on here, then let me know because my October is looking unusually free. Also, if you want to support me as a stagey content creator, head over to patreon.com forward slash Theatre, where for a variety of membership options you can help support me and gain access to a bunch of exclusive photo and video content as well as some other perks. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>